Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today uh, we're going to cover how to do graphs in Excel so that you can copy and paste them into your Word documents. A couple of things to be aware of. There are two types of graphs that we primarily use in science and those are the bar graphs and the line graphs. However, neither one of those things are what we're going to use in Excel and that sounds really stupid but um, just bear with me and I'll show you why. Okie dokie. So you use bar graphs when you have um, discrete types of data, things like different colors, as in this example, or we use uh, different types of, sorry about that, or we use different types of brand names or whatever. I could do, you know, how well does different types of laundry detergent clean my underwear. It doesn't really matter, but what you do is you just choose um, bar graphs for that because the independent variable is discrete. In other words, it's very different from the next one. So in this case, we tested the effects of different colors of light on bean plant growth. Well, we didn't measure the growth. We measured the final height. So our two columns are titled color of light and average height of bean plant in centimeters. Now many of you, when you first start out, will see your charts and you start writing in them and they actually look like this. And you can see that the titles are overlapping one another and you can't really see them. This doesn't bother me, but it does bother a lot of people because they feel like they need to skip uh, columns. Don't do that. So what you do is you click on A and click and drag to B because that's where our data is located and then you get over to the edge of B until you get the double-sided arrow. When you get that, you just double-click really quickly on, with the left mouse button and it automatically widens it out to match your widest thing that's in that column. In this case, it's the titles. Okay, so we have our handy-dandy little things and we can see them. We can see them clearly. So now what you do is you highlight only where your data is included. You don't go out here, you don't go down here, you only highlight the spots that has stuff in it. So we've got our data highlighted and now we want to insert the graph. Now remember I said that this is going to be a bar graph, but if you look over here in this uh, area, the type of bar graph is sideways and we don't want that. So what we actually want in Excel is called a column graph. Now a note on column graphs. You have a bunch of different ranges of, of options in Excel. Just like when you do a PowerPoint you've got lots of animations and sound effects and all sorts of stuff. And once you've played around with that a couple of times you're like wow this is really cool and then you realize that you know, it's not so cool and people kind of look at you funny if you're fancying it up when you don't need to. This is a basic lab report. You don't need to fancy it up. Please don't fancy it up. It just makes you look a little pretentious. So you just pick the 2D column, the first one down, which is called the clustered column. So we click that and it shows up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the legend. The reason why is because we only have one type of data and that's the bean plant height. Do I need a legend to tell me that? No, because I'm going to label the axes. If you delete the legend, it actually makes the graph clearer and easier to see. So you want to do that. So when you go into your graph, you'll see that once you've made the chart up here, you get a green chart tools menu. It only pops up once you've made a chart. You go to the layout menu and you're going to label your axes. So you don't click this one, you click the axis titles menu. So you click that one and you see the first one is the primary horizontal title axis, sorry, axis title, and we choose the title below the axis. Now, a lot of people instantly want to go in here and click and delete the words axis title. You don't need to do that. All you need to do is type. Excel is smart and it's a lot smarter now than it used to be. So what you do is you just start typing and you go, well, what is that on the bottom? It's the colors of light. If you ever need a reference, you just look at your column headings and it will tell you. So you say color 
of light and once you hit enter it pops up on your chart. Now let's do the axis title for the vertical axis which is where the dependent variable goes. So we axis titles, vertical axis, rotated title. That gives you the easiest one to see. And this is the bean plant height. So once I hit enter, it shows up on my graph. Okay, so now we have the vertical axis is the same as the chart title, which isn't handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that. Quickest way to do that is to click on the chart title and then start typing. And in science, it's a very simple formula for how to write your chart titles. You just write the effect of whatever your independent variable is on your dependent variable. So in this case, it's the effect of light color on plant height. And then we hit enter. Boop! And there it shows up. Now we can actually make this smaller, um, do all sorts of fun stuff with it, but I'm not going to bother right now. Now what we're going to do is when you paste into a Word document, you have two very basic uh, shortcut keys in Microsoft Office to use. The first thing that you use is the control plus the C button. C is in cat. So you click somewhere in the white space either to the right or the left of the chart title. Hit control C and it will copy that information for you and you can paste it in any Microsoft application anywhere. We'll just do this blank one to show you. Control V, as in Victor, pastes whatever you've copied. So there you go, and it's pasted, and you don't have to worry about fiddling with it to make it work right. And if we make it bigger, obviously it changes things so that you can see it a little bit better. There you go. Okay, let's go to line graphs. Now I've made up some data right here. And you can see that I've got concentration of oxygen in parts per million, intensity of green color, and numbers of bubbles produced. So let's take a look at um, how to graph a line graph, which again in Excel is not called a line graph, which is super fun. So we click on the top one, and let's say we only want to do the concentration of oxygen versus the green color. Well, when we do that, we highlight only those two pieces of data, say insert, and instead of line graph, we choose scatter plot. It sounds really stupid, but that's how we have to do it. So you click scatter and choose the second one down, which is the scatter with smooth lines, no data points. So you click on that one and there you have it. But let And then you would do the layout just like before, the chart tools, layout, axis titles, chart title, etc. Okay, so let's say, well, we actually didn't want to have this like that. So instead, we're going to highlight that. We want both pieces of data showing. We want two lines on the graph. So we say insert, scatter, second one down, and now we've got both lines on the graph. And then is actually when you would leave the, the chart legend up so that you can actually see what you're doing. Okay, that concludes your basics of how to do graphs in Excel, how to copy and paste. Remember, Control C, Control V, those are your two biggest friends, and it will help you get through getting your graphs into your lab reports. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at any point by email, by phone, or during office hours, which is highly recommended so that I can show you how to do it. Have a fantastic day.